The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here on this Friday. And it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty serious Friday. I can tell you this. Look at the Dow chart. Look at that. Yesterday went all the way down to 25,517. Rebounded very strongly on some optimism. Gaps down this morning. It makes a new, a new unrecovery low. Uh, 25,469, 200 period moving average at 25,351. All right, technical Friday, but I need to get into this for three reasons. One is Friday is the day, the very first day for some of the indices that could be a weekly peak C, number one. Number two is the daily charts have had some severe technical damage. It's going to take a lot more than just some kind of news to uh, turn it into a v-shaped recovery i just don't see that i see an arch formation potential over soul situation with some kind of news coming out in the next couple of days the big bounce but then we come and do some retesting number three is this is the first time for many of these indices that the monthly charts have seen a red candle but a big red candle similar to the ones that we saw back in February of last year with the January high in the Dow at 26,616. And then the October, it was September for the S&P, but October high for the Dow at 26,951. But we're not even halfway into the month. This candle can change a lot because my target was last week when I sent out my report to my subscribers over the weekend, I always send out this report showing the Dow, uh, the, all the different timeframes and what we're looking at Worst case scenario, good case, and all, et cetera. Nine period moving average was an initial very serious decline towards the 25,500s in the monthly chart. And the MACD hadn't crossed positive, but the stochastic was running quite well. So let's go into this in a nitty gritty way. I just do a quick review. The Dow is down 290 at 25,538. It's in leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology. I meant to put that up, and I didn't put it up. So, okay. But we're looking for four peaks or troughs. We mainly look at the peaks on the upside. We use technical analysis on the moving average, et cetera, on the downside plus left side support. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, we made this cup formation, double top at 26,695 on the 23rd of April. 26,689 was the retest six days later, seven days later. We had already been short for my subscribers. Uh, we went short on the 22nd because there were there were a lot of indications that that MACD was starting to turn down and the stochastic was not as strong. It was very good, but not as strong, but it had formed the M-shaped pattern we always talk about uh, that said, if there is a failure, it's going to happen very soon. You never know that you just do your technical analysis. So far, from that high of 26,695, we are down over 1,200 points. Doesn't sound like much, but you know, we actually went from 21,700 to 26,000, let's call it 700. Um, hey, I would call 5,000 points straight up, uh, a, pretty, uh, a pretty big move. And uh, now, this is the first deep correction we've had. Uh, it, we went from 26,241 back, in, was that in March? Yeah, March the 1st, we made a high, and then we pulled back to 25,208. So that was a thousand points. This is now more than a thousand points, and it's at a peak C now. Just on a purely technical basis, this is Technical Friday. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we have a pattern that I call the squash. I should have typed that in over there. Squash. Does it work every time? Well, it works a lot, and I'm talking about a lot over not ten charts or a hundred charts, but really thousands of charts over at least thirty years of looking at this particular pattern. And what it does is it says that the, the, the MACD is turned up with price making a kind of a V-shaped pattern low. The stochastic has roared to the upside, and the stochastic and on-balance volume are what turn up sharply. 
And that talk, that, that, that initial upthrust is the purview of the stochastic. But then once it gets to a peak B, and it usually makes an A and a B fairly quickly sharp, but this one went all the way for weeks and weeks, I think it was about nine weeks or more, and it went up to 26,241 in the weekly chart of the Dow, up to 20% at that point, and then it pulled back. And then what's really important about this is the MACD didn't even blink. It just kind of flattened a little bit. And at that point, you want to see the stochastic flatten out, but the MACD's fast-moving average, that's the nine-period differential, I call it the green line, fast-moving average, takes over the momentum. And that should take you to a... The, the stochastic takes you to a peak A, a B, and a C very quickly, but then the MACD has to take over. Well, I can just tell you this, that if the MACD, which has not turned, it's turned down, but it hasn't crossed negative yet, if that starts to cross the red line, the slow-moving average, that would take about another, I, I am, I'd estimate another 300 points, 375 down, and then that MACD will have crossed negative, and the stochastic, which is really strong at 89%, um, would go under 80%. So, so far, the weekly chart, even though it's a sharp pullback, even though it's under the 9 and the 14 period moving average, is still looking very good. Okay, and the monthly chart is showing, not even halfway through the month, a big red candle. That's all we can say. Now, let's go to the S&P. Yes, yes, got X, there we go. S&P, a leg C. Dow's in leg D to the downside, S&P's leg C. And it made its top on the 1st of May at 2949.52. The Dow made it on the, remember, the 23rd, the day after we went short. And this has made a peak C, and it's only now testing the 14-period moving average. It went under it, but it's sitting on it. That's good action. The monthly chart, once again, I have to say the same thing as the Dow. It's an actually uh, an outside bar, meaning it's made a higher high than last month and a lower low so far. But the month hasn't even closed. So um, what I'm going to look at here is say that the resistance is around about 28, it's at 2841. Resistance is at 28 on a very short-term basis. I'd say 2858 to 2865. That should be, uh, if it goes above that, we could have a deep, uh, a stronger rally. I'm suspecting we're getting so oversold. It won't take much news to, to actually have a decent bounce. The QQQ... NDX 100, let's finish these off in this particular time. The QQQ in leg D to the downside, MACD is expanding as it's coming down. I think this is the area that has the greatest vulnerability, just in terms of having had such a spectacular move. It might need a little more time, um, maybe not all that much more in price, but maybe a little more time. Stochastic's only at 27%, hasn't gone to the teens yet, I think it will, and the MACD is very negative. So at 182.20, made a low this morning of 181.03, takes you underneath, let me took, look to the left side, yep, it takes you, no, it hasn't closed that gap yet, it hasn't gone under 180.77, the, the gap up high of the 1st of April, all right, so we know what we're looking at there, and the monthly chart, the weekly chart, and the monthly chart went to all-time highs, that is a good sign, it says that is a peak C in the weekly, and you should go to a D, and the monthly chart is either an A or a G, I think it's an A, We'll deal with that as soon as we get back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dow's down 215. Good comeback. And the SB's down 29. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Ladies and gentlemen, two minute chart is trading at 2847. Right now, minus 25. It made a, a deep cup formation. It's really like a ball formation. Made a low at about 11 o'clock at 28.26, oh, round number uh, low, that's good. Then it goes to peak A, peak C, C1, C2, that's a double top, comes back down, starts a brand new move, A, B, C, D. Now it get, it's gone to D right at the 200 period exponential moving average, nice left side, right side price uh, time match, and we'll see if it's gonna be able to move now. If there is any news here that the market perceives as just even reasonable, it's so oversold, they can have a really sharp bounce. Now, I just wanted to show you Uber. Uber came public this morning. Oops, don't type it there. Type it right here. Uber. And, and they're so lucky they've got this four-letter name, Uber. And what do you have to hunt for? You've got it right here. Oops, Uber, waiting for data. What happened? Don't like this. Something's going on. U-B-E-R. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I would have to move away from that. Can we do it? We'll try. Okay, we'll be back to Uber in a moment. Um, most importantly, we want to be looking at, so we did the queues, we did that, we did that. No, IWM. The IWM was showing good relative strength two weeks ago, going into the, right now, Thursday, Friday of last week. But it has pulled back quite sharply to the 200 period moving average. I didn't, I didn't have time to really get into it. You remember I said, I don't understand this peak C. It just doesn't make sense. Something's wrong. I'm going to have time. I'll take a moment to see what it is. This is called the Chapman Wave Unconventional Flat Base uh, Restart. Now, that's a long title. The title's there for a reason. Why? Because the same instant restart at a peak D within three bars to make a new high pattern is formulated right here. I'm going to show you something in a moment. I discussed this. I couldn't remember the other day which chart it was. I believe it was the euro dollar. I believe not. Oh, my goodness. Was it not? Was it the USD? USD. I had this old plan. I wrote it down. I thought I wrote it down. Where did I write it down? Book's gone. All right, there it is. Okay. I wrote down... Uh... Oh, GB down. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that was a peak D in the USD JPY. That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about dollar GB DOW. I hope this is the one. Yes, 
So you remember I was talking about this, and I said it gets a little complicated, a little complicated. But I want to show it because I know that I have a lot of Chapman waivers out there. I've either taken my courses, or bought my CD introducing the Chapman wave methodology, and right here you can see this is a Chapman wave flat base restart. And I'd say if this is the case, then what we should be looking at is the uh, this is the uh, Dow Jones UK stock index. In other words, it looks exactly like the British FTSE, but it's made up of the Dow Jones. It's a Dow Jones instrument. Well, this little move right here, we are within three bars, it went to new high, but kept coming back to the low that was made right there to make peak D. That is at uh, 330.52 on the dollar GB DOW, trading uh, up 0.01 right now. Oh, they must have closed because they don't even know what's going on. Okay, so what we're looking at here is every time it rallies, it keeps coming back towards that level. It's a, it's a discovery I made years ago. And then what happens is when it makes its peak D, and very often it can go to an E. I've even seen it go to an F. It's the same pattern. It just keeps coming back. It doesn't go very high. When it comes back, it goes straight to and very often underneath the left side low. That, in this case, is the low of the 4th of April. And look what it's done. Not only has it gone down, it's gone right to the 200-period moving average. Now let's get back to whatever the heck we were looking at. Oh, IWM. IWM, he has the same pattern, except this one is what I call the unconventional. Why? Because after that, it made a slightly lower low than the low that was made to give it a peak D, and that was on the 9th of April. It went to a slightly lower low, and then it kept rallying, but kept coming back to this point. And that said to me, I've got something wrong here. I know, I know this pattern. And then when I was looking at it a few days ago, I said, there it is. That, that was a peak D. So now we're in leg B to the downside. Everything coincides. This is a leg C to the downside in the weekly chart. But so far, it doesn't mean to say that the IWM Russell 2000 uh, small cap stocks will lead the way to the upside. But it does say so far, it's holding in the pattern of the weekly chart, not having gone back to the all-time highs or close as the Dow and the, as the S&P and the Qs have done. It's holding very well. This is something for subscribers we're looking at. I don't know if I'm going to get a buy signal yet. I like the action. MACD's barely turned down on the weekly chart. Stochastic's at 86%. That's not so great. I would have preferred right now if it was 92%. But it's on watch because there could be a rotational action here that says at some point we'll find out that some areas that are going to be hit by the tariffs could, could be very detrimental to certain sectors, at least in the shorter term, until they get, get to be able to work out their game plan. And that might say that the small cap stocks might be in a situation that is better. Whether it says it can go to a leg D or not, I suspect it will go to a leg D, just as I'm anticipating all the others are going to go to leg Ds. But that's on my watch. I was asked that many times, uh, and I'm just saying, keep it on your list. I'm not jumping in here. I don't see any reason why I need to be buying any of these indices at this point. I still think there's a lot more work to be done. I'm not saying crash to the downside. I am saying work to be done. All right, let's go back to the EURUSD, which was trying to rally a little bit. Yep, it's had a nice little move over the last couple of days. It's stopped right at the 50-period exponential moving average. The MACD is good. Stochastic's very weak at 54%, and that weekly chart is WEAK weak, and so is the monthly. It needs to get, I've been saying this for a while, the euro dollar, the euro needs to get to the 1.35s, 1 1.135 area, and it needs to do it holding support all the way up so that it can rebuild strength in the weekly chart because that weekly chart does not look good. I'm not even talking about the monthly. And the USD JPY did have a peak D Chapman wave uh, top, and that should be a down arrow right there. It's in a sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the daily, and a sell signal in the uh, weekly. So I'm putting that in. Wow, how does that affect the dollar? Let me go back to the dollar DXY. Um, yeah, dollar uh, is a D in the weekly and a D in the, in the daily. But I'm still thinking that there will be eventually a leg D in the monthly chart, and it could be quite sharp when it gets here. So consolidating after a fantastic move. 
uh, question I wanted to do was to uh, question I had was uh, oh IYT we're out of the IYT just I'm not prepared to mess around it just acted so poorly even though the weekly chart should should still go to a D I'm thinking trough D in the weekly chart of the IYT the transports just says to me it's moving in sync to the downside with the Dow give it a little while I want to go back into those into the uh, the, the transports but just at this moment we're out we took our profits and we're just going to be watching uh, let me just see what else there was oh, a question about oh good question a question here about my Dow Quartet so let's just do this as we're about to go for a break IBM right now very weak at down a dollar 77 to 133.57 triple M very very weak at 174 UTX ugh. down sharply and Caterpillar also down sharply I'll be back we'll talk about it. since 1984 Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion while originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let me just do this here. Is that a 10? Yes. So this is a brand new buy mode right there. And we go to a two-minute chart of the IWM trading vehicle C. This DE could be a DE alternate count B. Okay, very nice. Is there something going on here? Dow's now only, only down 177. S&P's only down 20. Let's see what the Uber is doing here. Uber, two-minute chart has gone to a peak C. All right. So it comes out, opens at 42 round number low, and it bounces up to about the 43-ish area, then comes back down to a new low, 41.06. 
<clears throat> now is trying to establish the first buy signal to buy mode. Uh, it needs to get above 45, round number high, to start leg D. And we'll watch that. We'll be back. Okay. So here's oil. <clears throat> oh. CL is crude oil, crude oil just trading down uh, up 25 cents at the lower end of the range. I just wanted to show you these things again. Remember how important for me these channels are? You can stay in a channel for a long time. When you start to break down, there's the longest period of sideways move, not so much percentage to the downside, although 10% is uh, pretty big. Um, but it's holding steady underneath the, both the 9 and the 14 period moving averages. Crude oil at 6197 up 27 cents. Magdi's flat, negative but flat. Uh, negative, yep. And the stochastics at 27 percent. And and the balance has not bounced in the price. So you've used up technical uh, strength without the requisite move in the uh, price itself. Not good. I do want to go to the TLT. This is the Lehman 20 year bond fund. Made that leg D yesterday underneath the previous high. And this is the, the two things that may be just a little cautious today. Why I say to subscribers, we just we've got all our positions. Two were taken out yesterday, um, but I do I do think that um, we need to keep in mind that the VIX index had a really sharp move to the upside. That kind of move usually pulls back quite sharply with a turnaround in the market. So that's just something to keep in mind. And the other reason is the TLT did not go into the high 125s, 126 area. It is underneath the, the peak D that was made back on the 28th of March at 126.69. It's made a cup formation. MACD is good. Stochastic's at 82%. It's just kind of stalled here. And I'm looking at that saying, wait a minute. You've gone from a, a peak B, a peak D to a trough D to another D, and yet the market is saying money isn't moving sharply from stocks to bonds. Not yet. Anyway, it has moved, but not sharply. That would have said if it was in the 126s, especially if it was in the 127s by today with this kind of sell-off, that would have said, uh oh, be really careful because um, the market could now turn around very quickly. So we're watching this closely. Uh, most importantly, the 124.23 area, let's call it, yeah, 124.30s is, is the key support. And the 120, just short term, you've got a trend line resistance at 125.70s. So that's the parameter I'd be looking for Monday. A uh, quick thing we wanted to do right now is uh, look at the, uh, right here. Just wanted to show you that there was a little breakout. Look, ESM19 broke out. It's in this leg E, still extending leg E. That could be an Tapping Wave Instant Restart. Calling it E for now. MACD is very strong. Stochastic said 96%. That's very good. Hey, this is quite a turnaround. The low today was 26, um, 80, 26, sorry, 28.26 round number low. And we're now trading 30 points higher. You know, these moves are, these are big moves. Um, so let's get back to our story here. Oh, and there's something else I wanted to show you. So let's just do the TLT. I wanted to show you that high-grade copper uh, is still pretty weak. It's up a tad right now, 0.006 at 2.777. And wood, which is uh, the international, this is the iShares of the global timber and forestry ETF, has taken out this key support level over the last two days. It's trading at 61.42. It better hold the 61s, uh, otherwise it's a real problem. And HGX, which is the housing sector index. Um, hey, this is not bad. Housing sector, because the rates are still so low, has pulled back from a peak G, unusual peak G in the Chapman Wave methodology. Look at the MACD, did not confirm the rally. It was a G slash C, it became a G with a big pullback under the 14 period moving average. There's a Chapman Wave. Um, both of these are Chapman Wave Roman candles. This last one worked very well. It's pulled back sharply, and the stochastic's at 42%. Going to have to watch that real, real closely. So I just wanted to show you the Dow right now with this move to the upside. Look, a second candle. Now, we've seen this before, where you get these long wick candles, and, and they, they, there's some kind of a rule that says, whew, you started to make a couple of these, you could have a really powerful move to the upside. I look at this and I say, it says that there was weakness, and it says that there was emotional buying. Why? 
because until you start to make a leg to the upside, and that would mean that the Dow would have to do it today, but it hasn't done it yet, have to go above 25,517, 20, sorry, 25,884. That is another 200 points higher to start a leg A. That would say now you can look at these candles extremely positively. So um, that's the story there. And a uh, question I had about, oh, yes, uh, can I look at Apple? Apple is down five at 195.69 peak D. Remember how many peak Ds do you get? A lot. Look at the monthly peak D. What was the, P, what was the, that was a peak F in the, in the weekly. So back at the ranch, what we're looking at is Apple is pulling back and, and hurting the Dow. And because of it, I have to look at, <clears throat> here we go. Well, I would look for support. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get some water. <coughs> Went into this little doji candle low, <coughs> 193.14. Today's low went under it, 192.77. So the next, oh, the whole series of lows, and then you get the low that was made on the, on the, 14 period moving average on the daily chart on the 26th of March at 184.58. Oh, that's nine points away. We don't have to deal with that right now. Let's just say that <clears throat> there is a sell mode in the daily chart of the of Apple. The uh, the weekly chart has made a peak C, still with pretty good technicals. And 191.77 is the 14 period moving average. It's gone underneath the nine period moving average. Just we re were watching this closely. Amazon, <clears throat> Amazon has made a peak F in the uh, right there. I didn't put the down arrow at one at 1964.40 <clears throat> on the third, two days after the S and P. It's not bad. Look, this is pretty good action. You know, Amazon is still a monster because it just they're in everything, <clears throat> and that will be telling us. If there was a real slowdown, an economic slowdown, I think you'd see it in Apple, I mean, in Amazon. So uh, as it stands right now, this is good action, all-time high, 2050.50 on the week of the 7th of September, plunges to 1307 round number low, trading right now at 18, 1875, um, having made a high in the 1960 area. So far, this is really very good action in Amazon. That's a big positive. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. Dow is down 142, SB's down 16. Both have come back very nicely. Let's see if that can last. Oh, news in the den China talks done for the day. All right. We'll do if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the 
dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Yeah, so RTM, uh, RTYM, this is the Russell 2002 Minute. Made a potential peak F right now, but the strength says it could be one little tad higher. Uh, Going to be watching this uh, because uh, there's definitely people wanting to buy, <laughs> and there's a real toss-up now between the sellers at the first day part of the, no, the buyers at the first part of the day and the sellers. And I had a chap with of trend gauge reading, which gave another 9011 point rally earlier overnight. So this is going to be very important. So this is the ESM19. Also, it's the same. They made a peak E, pulling back a little bit more. We're going to be watching this because if the Dow manages to close just minus 35 or even up, but, but somewhere around there, over the weekend, <coughs> the news would be a lot better than if we go back towards the lows of the day, for sure. I mean, we'll see. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Amazon, as I said, I want you to also look at, oh, I had it already here. Um, Oh, yeah. So you get you get uh, a whole bunch of things going on. And the IYR, which is the REITs, was kind of a, the only way I can read this is this is the US iShares Dow Jones REITs Index Trust. And it has all these, you know, SBG, yes, this is SBG, um, re, big, re, uh, big company. What's the Boston one? Boston, uh, Boston Real Realty BXP, that's it. Um, so it has a bunch of these PSA. So it's, you know, this is commercial property for interest. But I think that people were looking at this as a potential interest and capital gain. This has had a much better chart formation than some of the other interest areas, interest bearing areas. So it's held the 14 period moving average. It is up today, 41 cents at 86.38. It has this Chapman wave. H pattern after the peak D, there was a how many fourth, fourth highest peak, peak D. That's where you get cautious. So it pulls back sharply from the 88s, goes down to the 84s, not a big deal, 4%, 4, 4 points, about 5%. Rallies back up to the high 87, and then it comes back to the 85s, and now it's bouncing around. So far, this is holding very well. Keep your eye on the IYR, because um, this is interest-bearing, but there's a potential at peak B and holding well. We'll see. It just needs another week. We'll watch this closely for the next week. But it could, in fact, start a leg C, and that would be above the high that was made. Oh, it had a Chapman wave um, 18, 88, 19, 88, 29, 23. This is a Chapman wave two bar reversal, and it did pull back sharply. But if it goes at any point above 88.23, that's only less than two points higher. That starts the leg C, and that really improves the monthly chart, which already looks pretty good. Keep your eye on the IYR. Um, the next thing we want to look at is um, within the context of the XLF, that is the financials, 
look, there's a pullback here, just 0.06. It had a, a, a pullback to the 50-period moving average. Didn't take out yesterday's low. I still think this is an area to keep your eye on. <clears throat> the financials. I think they're doing well, not all of them, but most of them are doing pretty well. I don't think at this particular point they look great for an all-time high above 30.33, trading at 27.23 right now. But as long as they hold, if in two weeks' time they, the XLF has held the 26s and is able to rebound and at any point goes above 27.53, I'm looking at this and saying, you know what? I'm looking for the areas that survived this big sell-off. I'm looking for areas that have the potential that are unloved. I, they really are unloved, the, the financials. I mean, I'm talking about what I hear. So many people over the last month I've heard say, they, they just, the PE is not right. They just, but I think they've done everything correctly so far to be very sound banks. We'll find out later on in another year or so whether they were all sound, but that's what I'm looking at. And so far, they've acted very well. XLF, keep it on your list just to look at. Uh, one other thing that I want to look at is that, 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 and I haven't looked at, um, oh, the um, bots. Someone asked me about bots. This is the robots. So the robots had a really big move all the way up to a peak B because they were, it was an IPO just back in 2017, I believe. Yeah, no, no, yeah, 2016, uh, September. Comes out around about the 14, 16 area goes to 1524 low on the December 20, 2016, screams up to 27.42, January of 2018, and like the New York Stock Exchange and some others, have not gone back to the all-time highs, goes all the way down to the 200-period moving average, goes to, um, oh, back to the 15s, right? 16.01. What a round trip. And then it has a fabulous rate to the 22 area right there. I think it missed it by a penny. Yeah, 21.99. Uh, that was on the 21st, 17th of April. Pulls back. This is one global robotics. Looking out, not right now because it's still consolidating. Looking out, another area that I'd be looking at. Um, positively, that is. We don't have a position in this. Uh, then there was a question that I had about, uh, where was it? Oh, FXI. That's what I wanted to show you. The FXI <clears throat> has closed for the day, I'm sure. Um, but we might be trading as slow as down four cents at 11.65. I mean, China has closed for the day. And the FXI is the uh, iShares China Large Cap ETF. And it goes from 45.96 down to the 41 area. So 10% on China, it's not, not too bad. My thinking here is it's the monthly H pattern that I'm really looking at. How the FXI gets out of this particular pattern is going to be so important. Technically, it could pull back a little bit more. It could go to the 40. If it goes low in the 40, you've got to anticipate there's a chance that it's going to retest the lows below um, somewhere around the 38 to 37 area. But if it's able to have an inside bar in May, uh, we're in May, in April, March, April, May, June, in June, sorry, uh, in June, that would say that the worst might be over. They're going to have to deal with the tariffs, but it says that somehow they are, the, the perception is that they will be dealing with the tariffs in a positive way. But if on the weekly chart we are about to cross negative in the MACD for the first time since it broke above way back in uh, 2018, that was, what was the date there? Was that October? No, it was November. November, the week of the 16th. This is the first time the MACD is deflected once before back in the big sharp, or sharp sell of going to the January low. But it's, this is the one to watch, the FXI. Let's go to Hong Kong. HKDOW, -H that should be close. Look, much better chart. The actual Hong Kong, um, Dow Jones Hong Kong index, I suspect is very much like the Hang Seng. So I'm looking at this saying, okay, there's a, a, an unusual pattern where it starts to make a, a sideways expanding V with a flat top and an expanding base. And then suddenly there's a bad news and it plummets. But you look at it, the MACD. It hasn't yet crossed negative in the weekly chart, and the stochastic's still at 81%, and the monthly chart looks way better. 
So what's the difference? The difference is that this is a much broader index. The FXI is just the big, big, big caps, uh, China index. So I'm looking at the difference between the two of them and saying, all right, let's, let's compromise between the two and follow them both because the HK, the Hong Kong index, might be telling us a little bit more. Uh, we'll see. But at the moment, it is up 4.30, um, having closed, uh, I think, already, way, way earlier. All right, I'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. The Dow's come back. It's down 109. SP's down uh, just 13. Look at Uber. Uber made that low in the 41s. Now it's trading at 44.61. Not a big deal, but it is a big deal based on the market. It's holding pretty darn well so far. Let's see if it goes to a leg D in the weekly, in the weekly, in the five minute chart. Um, it's only been out since just about noon, just before noon. Uh, 44.85 is the high. It needs to get to 45, 44.86. And it'll start leg D in the uh, five minute chart. And only a leg A, peak A, and it'll start leg B in the 10 minute chart. That's how we do it sequence by sequence. Short term, two minute, five minute. 10 minutes, that could be daily, weekly, monthly. Doesn't matter, we're watching it closely. All right, back to our story. Um, so within the context of looking at the different markets, what I want you to do is to look at the IYC because IYC has been absolutely on a tear. It's just a spectacular index. And it is the iShares US Consumer Services ETF. It does have Amazon and that's a big deal, but it has Amazon 
uh, Comcast, Disney, Home Depot, Netflix, McDonald's, Walmart, Starbucks, Lowe's. I mean, this is a panoply of stocks that have been doing very well over the last uh, six weeks or so. So now it's got a down signal, so it's a sell mode in the daily, in a leg C to the downside. The weekly is holding beautifully at a leg peak D. There's no way it's going to make a, a higher high this week in the next few hours. I shouldn't say that because anything can happen, right? The Dow's already come back 300 points. Um, so 218.33, and eh, it's not going to move six points. So yeah, peak D may be formed right as we speak in the weekly chart. Look at this. Since the low in December of 168.10, IYC has gone. It's, this is the third red candle. It's in a leg D. Others have actually gone to a B or a C, so it's gone a little ahead of itself in terms of the Chapman Wave methodology going to Ds. But look at the spectacular move all time. Hey, wait a minute. That's the end of the show. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom. I'll be back on Monday. Check out my opening call. Hopefully you'll find it profitable and fruitful and educational. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday. Oh, that was a quick hour.